Uh, I have to issue a disclaimer initially. The role of Jean Meister will be played in this morning's performance by Christopher Bishop. So, uh, Jean, my colleague at uh, Future Workplace, has taken ill and, and couldn't attend, so she sent me in her stead. I'm delighted to be here with all of you. Uh, delighted to be talking about the topic of lifelong learning because uh, with all lack of modesty, as, as Charles was implying, I've had seven careers over the past 40 years since I graduated from college. So last time I was in Berlin, I was at the end of a world tour with Robert Palmer. I was playing bass and keyboards and guitar and singing with him. Um, we went out to do a live album in London, actually, at the Orpheum Theater after our tour through Germany. Uh, I ended up in New York as a session musician. Uh, again, did a performance with Chuck Berry at the Meadowlands in front of 14,000 people with no rehearsal. Chuck comes out on stage and he's, Chuck Berry, hey! He, he turns to the band and he goes, you guys know these tunes, right? We're like, yeah, go ahead, Chuck. Count it off, we're with you. Whatever you want to play. It was a, a thrill for sure. Uh, ended up in the jingle business in New York. Anybody uh, in the jingle business in Berlin? So radio and TV commercials. I wrote a lot of music for television. Again, sang and played on the first Kit Kat jingle. Give me a break, give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. So because you get paid every time it runs on the radio or the TV, I made a nice taste for many years. In fact, I just got a check because they were using that jingle at a ride at Hershey Park, which is like an entertainment place in, in America. Uh, then I uh, ended up we're using this instrument as Synclavier, which was a digital musical instrument early days, 1980. It's a quarter of a million dollar instrument that had timbres sampled on a Winchester drive. And if any of you remember that technology, 512K, this big box, you know, like a blade kind of, you slid it into a holder. Um, and then became intrigued by this wacky new thing called the internet and the World Wide Web. So, in about 1994, 95, I transferred my jingle producing skills into being a web producer and worked initially uh, at several seminal interactive agencies in New York as a producer and senior project manager, building sites for like Johnson & Johnson and uh, Sedgwick Reinsurance. Uh, and then much to my surprise, got a call from IBM in 1998. I met a woman actually on the train. We were commuting into New York together on a Sunday, working eight-hour weeks in the then seminal uh, digital um, interactive business. She worked at IBM. I was working at uh, CKS Partners. Uh, we kept in touch. Uh, and in 98, she sent me notes saying, you know, IBM is expanding their corporate internet programs. Would you ever consider coming to work at IBM? And I said, absolutely not. What, what would I do at IBM? I'm like a rock and roll guy. I do gigs. I still hang out late at night. I, you know, I like to carouse and play all different kinds of music. She's like, well, just go down, just humor me. Go down and talk to my VP. I think, you know, at least you'll have an interesting conversation. So I went and talked to her. And I think this is telling. So this, this interview with this woman, Carol Moore, give her my resume. Uh, it has 20 years of music on it. Otherwise, there's a big hole, right? So I launched into my disclaimer. Well, Carol, I was a musician. I mean, I still do gigs here in New York. I lived in Manhattan for 16 years, by the way. Uh, I still do gigs in clubs. I subbed on Broadway for Cats. I played at CBGB's in punk bands. I did country western gigs. I played jazz gigs, duos with piano players. You know, you do whatever you can to make a living as a musician in New York. Um, she's kind of looking it over, and she goes, yeah, no, I, I get it. Let's talk about a start date. And I was like, what? I don't think you heard me. I said, I'm like a musician. I'm like a rock and roll guy. I had long hair, and I'm like, you know, hanging out late. And she's like, no, no. The qualities that made you successful as a freelance musician in New York City will make you successful at IBM. And those characteristics, and I think they're apropos to this discussion, germane to our topic today of lifelong learning. She said, you're going to need to be a creative problem solver. You're going to have to be resourceful and resilient. You're going to have to be comfortable, not tolerant, but comfortable with ambiguity, things changing all the time. You're going to have to be able to work across disciplines, have a sense of what they're doing in corporate legal, what they're doing in marketing, the production line where they're building the, the big iron in Poughkeepsie. You're going to have to be um, able to work across cultures as well, because to paraphrase uh, Lord Salisbury, the sun never sets on IBM. Right? So as we stand here, as I stand here, there are 430,000 IBMers working in 190 countries around the world. So I was often on calls with people in Australia, and in India, in Belarus, in China. So she said, can you start next week? And I was like, do I have to take a drug test? 
Uh, needless to say, I did and I passed and 15 years went by and I worked in lots of different roles at IBM. Again, um, Sana was saying it's a big company, similar to Toyota, in that you can have lots of different roles and they encourage you to sort of migrate across the company. So I worked as a business strategist. Certainly as IT began to drive business models, this wacky web internet thing was going to help execs who had P&Ls make their bogey, make their number. Um, so business strategy consultant, I worked again at HR comms at headquarters for a while. That was really fascinating. Worked in corporate citizenship and corporate affairs, presenting exec comms to that organization. A couple stints in the line of business, global technology services, supporting these general managers who had $3 billion uh, targets selling services and technology. And my last stint, as, um, as Charles was saying, was in IBM Global Financing and driving social media, sharing expertise broadly um, out into the world as a differentiator, as a market-making uh, market device. So I've had lots of different careers, and I think the key is lifelong learning. Learning to unlearn, relearn, figure out what I need to learn, becoming intrigued with things, not being afraid to seek out resources, people, classes, books, information, wherever, that can help me make these changes. And I think, again, with all that like modesty, I'm somewhat the poster child for how today's learners, maybe many of you, and certainly your kids, and definitely your grandchildren, are going to be working in this new global borderless workplace, this new workplace paradigm that we're all dealing with and discussing today. So thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. I look forward to your comments and conversation.